So a while ago I picked up this ceramic spray coating to try on the inside of my CNC machine. CNC's have a water-based kind of oil emulsion coolant that completely covers the windows and it's really difficult to see what's going on. So I was hoping this could help cut down on some of the visibility issues. You can use sprays like this. Uh, this is from Rain-X and they work but they don't work for very long. So this is basically like a a silicone inside of some solvents. You spray it on and you get a waxy silicone layer on the inside of the machine. But the coolant very quickly strips this away and it goes back to being just bare glass. So I was hoping this ceramic spray coating would be a little more robust because it's basically the same formulation as this stuff. It's a bunch of silicones and waxes, but it also includes ceramic. So if we look in the ingredients, you can see that it's water and isopropanol as the base solvent. There's dimethicone and disiloxane. Those are two different silicones. Dimethicone is basically PDMS. Carnauba wax provides the kind of waxy character to give it more hydrophobicity. So in effect, it's solvent plus silicones plus wax, and that's what probably makes it hydrophobic. But it does have amorphous silica, and that's what I'm interested in today, seeing what exactly does the amorphous silica look like in this product? Is it you know, nanoparticles or big aggregates, can we even see it? And then a whole bunch of other ingredients which are probably there to help keep the silica in suspension by altering the pH or the charge of the uh, solution. So the plan is we're gonna spray this onto some glass slides and take a look at it under the SEM and AFM and see if we can see anything. So for today's test, we're just gonna use regular glass slides as the substrate. Uh, it's important to clean these first though because they do come with some type of very thin coating that helps keep them from sticking together in the package. Which will definitely interfere with our test if we don't clean it off first because it's something that's kind of hydrophobic itself. So first we're going to just dunk it in some acetone, give it a bit of a swirl, and whatever the coating is comes off in acetone so this is usually sufficient. And just give it a quick wipe with a Kim wipe, something lint free. And in my experience, this gets basically all the coating off. But there will be a little bit of acetone residue, so we're going to throw it back in the acetone, give it a swirl, and then dunk it in 99% isopropyl. And the point here is just to get rid of that acetone residue, and isopropyl leaves less residue. Now if this was something important, like a microfab experiment where we really cared about this surface, uh, especially if we're looking for some adhesive properties, something sticking to the glass. The next step would be running this under distilled water and then drying it off with compressed air or nitrogen because that'll give you the cleanest, nicest surface. I'm not going to worry about it because this stuff includes isopropyl alcohol, so any residue that's left on here will just get dissolved in the solvent of the spray itself. All right, so we have our clean glass slide. I'm going to mask off a section of it with some tape. So I would like to see a nice clear line between the spray and the bare glass. It'll make it easier on the AFM well, and the SEM too, but it'll just make comparisons a little bit clearer if we actually have a nice masked off region. All right, so the instructions say to shake well spray it and wipe with clean folded microfiber to remove. Right. Okay, got microfiber and let's remove it, see what happens. I'm not sure if you're supposed to like buff it or just wipe it off, so we'll just go somewhere in the middle. Okay. All right, we're going to let that dry and then we'll check it under the AFM first and then after that we'll probably sputter coat it and throw it under the SEM. So here is my Atomic Force Microscope Setup, or AFM for short. If you're new to the channel and haven't seen the video on the AFM, I'll put a link up here somewhere so you can go check it out. It's a really interesting machine and in how it functions, basically by tapping on the surface with a really tiny probe. But it lets us get surface detail of something like this ceramic coating without having to use an optical method. So the microscope is actually this unit down here, that's the AFM, and then this optical microscope up here is just to help us align everything. So I'm gonna get the slide under there, take the tape off, and we'll start probing it. 
Right, so I am not seeing much on the AFM at all. A few particles, but not a lot. So I'm going to give it another spray and let it sit for a while before wiping it off and hopefully we'll get a little more that way, but uh, not looking good. <laughs> so that is plenty and we're just gonna let that sit for a sec. Okay, now let's dump it off and wipe it as recommended. And I'm not gonna buff it this time, I'm just gonna like gently wipe it away. And hopefully we'll see a little bit more. Yeah, you can kinda see the streaky. So it's on there, I'm gonna peel the tape off. And the other side, you'll notice there's kind of a, a line down the middle where it builds up. I think it doesn't focus. There it is, you kinda see that line. So it's on there. All right, so let's see what's going on under the AFM. First up, just for context, this is a scan of bare glass. So this is the microscope slide, nothing on it, just kind of what you would expect if there's nothing in the field of view. And it is basically flat to like a couple nanometers. So if we go over to the ceramic spray side, we can see not a whole lot. There are some particles kind of floating around and depending on which field of view we look at, there are more or less particles. These little blobs are between 50 and 100 nanometers, which is kind of in the size you'd expect for silica nanoparticles, assuming that's what's in it. Kind of disappointingly, there's just not a lot of it. So I was expecting the entire field of view to be covered with small nanoparticles because that's what's supposedly protecting, you know, whatever you're spraying. But in reality, we're seeing a handful of particles per five or 10 micron field of view, which just means there's not a lot going on here. The areas next to the tape line are relatively more dense because you can actually just see a little bit of the coating that didn't get wiped away because the tape protected it. So there are more particles over there, but out in the center where you would be, you know, wiping or buffing the stuff off whatever you're coding, it's pretty barren. Uh, a quick and sort of funny aside, my shop is right by the airport. And a couple times a day, the National Guard will land their F-35s, which are super loud and typically are just kind of annoying. But when you're trying to make a very sensitive nanometer level scan with an AFM, it basically ruins your scan because the acoustics of those jets landing puts a huge noise spike into your scan and, and totals it. So that was fun today, dealing with the jets landing. Right, so we're gonna put this into the SEM now, but glass is an insulator, so it won't behave nicely under the electron beam. So I've sputtered a thin layer of silver on top of it, just five nanometers, so won't be enough to really affect things, but gives it a little bit of a shine, to kind of a dull gray color and it will be conductive enough that charging won't be as much of an issue. Under the SEM, we can see the tape line down the middle. So this is where the tape was and the spray got kind of accumulated next to the tape and didn't get wiped off. And that's what all the globby stuff is. Everything to the left is the ceramic spray. Everything to the right is the bare glass. If we cruise around a little, you can see that there are particles kind of scattered about you know, there, there's stuff going on here, but it's not very dense. So as we suspected from the atomic force microscope images, this just isn't very heavily filled with the particles. You can tell these are from the spray because there's specific regions where you can see by eye streakiness where I didn't wipe or buff away all the spray and there's like noticeable streaks. And you can see those streaks under the SEM as well. And if we zoom into those, you can see that the streaks are full of little particles and those particles are on the order of 50 to 100, 200 nanometers. So this is what we were seeing under the AFM. And it's basically the same story, kind of cruising around. We see areas that have some particles, some areas that have essentially no particles. It's plain glass. So that leaves us with two potential conclusions, I think. The first is that the silica particles are so small that they're not resolvable by my instruments. I find this unlikely because the AFM has resolution down to single digit nanometers. So unless these are like one or two nanometer particles, we would probably see something. 
And if we didn't, it makes you question how useful these particles are. If it's one to two nanometers of silica and only a couple nanometers thick, that's not a very durable coating, even if it exists. So I would question the usefulness of something so small. The other conclusion I think we could potentially draw is that the particles we're seeing is in fact the silica and there's just not a lot of it in the spray, presumably because it doesn't actually do anything. You know, it's a amorphous silica, silicon dioxide, glass, basically. And putting glass on top of your own windshield glass or paint probably just doesn't do much of anything at all. So why put that much of it into a spray when it's mostly a marketing gimmick? Now, I don't know if this is true at all. I looked and I couldn't find a patent for this particular spray, so I don't know any of the details of it. And I don't quite have the right equipment to chemically analyze the spray to see if there's something more interesting going on. But from a purely morphological point of view, just looking at it, it doesn't look like there's a lot of anything happening with this kind of silica particle business. That's not to say this stuff doesn't work. It seems to be moderately water repellent. Water beads up if you spray it onto, say, a windshield or something. But yeah, I suspect the amorphous silica bit is just, just a marketing gimmick, which honestly is a little disappointing. I was hoping this would be some type of, you know, interesting ceramic nanoparticle spray that we could abuse for other purposes, but it doesn't look like that's the case. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. Thanks to all my patrons. I really appreciate your support so I can make videos like this about <laughs> weird ceramic sprays. And yeah, I think that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.